God was thinking about you long before you ever thought about Him. His purpose for your life predates your conception. He planned it before you existed without your input. You may choose your career, your spouse, your hobbies, and many other parts of your life, but you don't get to choose your purpose. This book by Pastor Rick Warren was an all-time bestseller. Listen to Rick read a short introduction about his thoughts on achieving the purpose God has in store for you. Then listen to some readings from the Bible to learn more about how God has helped other people fulfill their purpose and how he plans to help you achieve the purpose he created for you. You are not an accident. Your birth was no mistake or mishap, and your life is no fluke of nature. Your parents may not have planned you, but God did. He was not at all surprised by your birth. In fact, he expected it. Long before you were conceived by your parents, you were conceived in the mind of God. It is not fate, nor chance, nor luck, nor coincidence that you are breathing at this very moment. You are alive because God wanted to create you. The Bible says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. God prescribed every single detail of your body. He deliberately chose your race, the color of your skin, your hair, and every other feature. He custom made your body just the way he wanted it. He also determined the natural talents you would possess and the uniqueness of your personality. The Bible says, you know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Because God made you for a reason, he also decided when you would be born and how long you would live. He planned the days of your life in advance, choosing the exact time of your birth and death. The Bible says, you saw me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. God also planned where you'd be born and where you'd live for his purpose. Your race and nationality are no accident. God left no detail to chance. He planned it all for his purpose. The Bible says, from one man he made every nation and he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. Nothing in your life is arbitrary. It's all for a purpose. Most amazing, God decided how you would be born. Regardless of the circumstances of your birth or who your parents are, God had a plan in creating you. It doesn't matter whether your parents were good, bad, or indifferent. God knew that those two individuals possessed exactly the right genetic makeup to create the custom you he had in mind. They had the DNA God wanted to make you. While there are illegitimate parents, there are no illegitimate children. Many children are unplanned by their parents, but they are not unplanned by God. God's purpose took into account human error and even sin. God never does anything accidentally, and he never makes mistakes. He has a reason for everything he creates. Every plant and every animal was planned by God, and every person was designed with a purpose in mind. God's motive for creating you was his love. The Bible says long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind, had settled on us as the focus of his love. God was thinking of you even before he made the world. In fact, that's why he created it. God designed this planet's environment just so we could live in it. We are the focus of his love and the most valuable of all his creation. The Bible says God decided to give us life through the word of truth so we might be the most important of all the things he made. This is how much God loves and values you. In Exodus chapter 9, the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and confront Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord says. I have raised you up for this very purpose. So God had created Pharaoh for a purpose and was about to tell him his purpose. But before we can really understand God's plan, we need to hear some background information from God. And the Lord told Moses, when you arrive back in Egypt, go to Pharaoh and perform all the miracles I have empowered you to do. But I will harden his heart so he will refuse to let the people go. Did you catch that? Before Moses goes back to Egypt, God says he will harden Pharaoh's heart 
that is, make him stubborn, and he will not let the Israelites go. God plans to use his supernatural mind control on Pharaoh. So they took soot from a furnace and stood before Pharaoh. Moses tossed it into the air, and festering boils broke out on people and animals. The magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils that were on them and on all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said to Moses. After hardening his heart again, in verse 16, God tells Pharaoh what purpose he had chosen for him. I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So Pharaoh's purpose was not for his benefit, nor for all the people afflicted by the plagues. Then after a few more plagues, hear this. Pharaoh quickly Aaron, summoned Moses right and Aaron here. and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord your God to take this deadly plague away from me. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites go. Then after the plague on the firstborn, where all the firstborn males of the Egyptians, including Pharaoh's son, were killed, Pharaoh did this. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up! Leave my people, you and the Israelites, who worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds as you have said, and go. And also bless me. But after the Israelites packed all their belongings and set out on their journey through the desert, can you guess what the Lord did? Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near Pi Hahiroth between Migdol and the sea. They are to encamp by the sea directly opposite Baal Zephon. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. According to Rick Warren, God had planned all of these plagues before he created the universe. He planned the birth of each one of the firstborn, scheduled every day of their lives, and planned their deaths. God never makes a mistake and never leaves anything to chance. As strange as it may seem, there are several scriptures and other examples which back up many of Warren's claims. A few examples follow. The Lord Almighty has sworn, Surely, as I have planned, so it will be, and as I have purposed, so it will happen. For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Rebecca's children were conceived at the same time by our father Isaac. Yet, before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose and election might stand, not by works but by him who calls, she was told, the older will serve the younger. Just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. 
The scripture Paul quoted, Esau I hated, is from Malachi chapter 1, verse 3. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. This is the translation of hated from the King James Version lexicon. The Hebrew word is sawne and means to hate personally, enemy, foe, be hateful, odious, utterly. But the New Testament was written in Greek, so the word used is misosis and is translated hate, hated, hateful, hates, hating. It is stated that God had made the choice to love Jacob and hate Esau even before they were born, before they had done anything good or bad. Now continuing in Romans 9. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not, therefore, depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For Scripture says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. Rick Warren is absolutely correct when he says, you may choose your career, your spouse, your hobbies, and many other parts of your life, but you don't get to choose your purpose. God made that choice for you long ago. In fact, before time began. Think about that. God's choice applies individually and specifically to each and every person who has ever lived. One of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us? For who is able to resist his will? But who are you? a mere human being, to talk back to God. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for noble purposes and some for disposal of refuse? What if God, although choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the objects of his wrath prepared for destruction? And another scripture says, this is the stone that will make people stumble, the rock that will make them fall. They stumbled because they did not believe in the word. Such was God's will for them. Is it really God's will that he had predestined certain people to believe and thus go to heaven? And is it really his will to have predestined certain other people to not believe and thus go to hell? Well. These scriptures sure seem to bear that out. Now here's from Ellicott's commentary on 1 Peter 2.8. We may say that God puts men sometimes into positions where during this life they almost inevitably reject the truth. This is implied in the very doctrine of election. For example, in 2 Thessalonians 2.13 where if God selects one man out of the hundred for salvation through belief of the truth, it seems to follow logically that the ninety and nine are appointed to have no share in that salvation through disbelief of the truth. Now Gill's exposition. As there are some whom God appointed and foreordained to believe in Christ, on whom he has determined to bestow true faith in him, and who have it as a pure gift, in consequence of such appointment. So there are others whom he has determined to leave in that disobedience and infidelity into which the fall brought and concluded them, through which they stumbled at Christ and his word, and in consequence thereof justly perish. As is revealed in these passages, the objects, that is, the people of God's wrath or hatred were chosen and prepared for destruction in his original plan before time began. This means that since the beginning of the universe, God has created innumerable billions of people for the ultimate purpose of burning in hell for all eternity. Now recall this excerpt from the commentary by Pastor Warren. Because God made you for a reason, he also decided when you would be born and how long you would live. 
He planned the days of your life in advance, choosing the exact time of your birth and death. The Bible says, You saw me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. The UNICEF estimates that an average of 353,000 babies are born each day around the world. And according to the World Health Organization, latest figures show that 9.2 million children under five are dying every year, which is down from 12 million in 1990. Can you imagine how busy God must be dealing with the complexities of planning, scheduling, and recording the daily details of all these children, and listening to your prayers, asking Him to alter your daily schedule to accommodate your wishes. This concept of God's attention to the details of every person's life applies to each and every man, woman, child, toddler, infant, unborn fetus formed in the wombs of pregnant mothers whom God drowned in the flood, which was the very reason he created them. Then there were 32,000 young virgin girls whose entire families God ordered killed then gave these girls to the Israelite soldiers to be raped. See Numbers chapter 31, verses 17 through 35. They each had their days scheduled and recorded in God's book. God's eternal, sovereign, immutable, determinate purpose governs all events. The same applies to Hitler, his victims, all the school shooters, and their victims, and on and on and on. Now, having followed the logic of Pastor Warren's theology into the depths of absurdity, shall we pray?